when we talk about the situation with people pouring across the border, they're pouring across the border in a nation that has an inheritance behind it. And it has a law that is supposed to be holding everything mm-hmm. up. Now, I'll, I will grant that law is hanging by a thread right now. Of course, when secularists and humanists get into the world and society, they look at a law and they say, who says? I don't care what a bunch of old, dead white people said. Why is that got to be enduring? Did what? you just quote a Mormon prophecy? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Like, the point is, is if you're a secularist and a humanist, atheist, agnostic, and you don't believe that anything's transcendent, period, you're not going to respect the fact that what's behind the, say, amendments is the transcendent law of God. Mm -hmm. So, like I read at the beginning of the show today, when you look at Deuteronomy, when you look throughout Jesus' teachings in the New Testament, when you look at throughout the Apostle Paul, and they're quoting like, you know, don't receive an accusation against an elder unless it's in the base of two to three witnesses. Like, they're literally after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, assuming the abiding validity of the law of God in terms of the judicial standards. Now, all that to say, when you have people pouring across a border in a nation that has a law inheritance behind it, it's appropriate to ask the question, is this how you do this? <laughs> uh, is this how, uh, is, it, is this even comparable to sojourners in the land of Israel, right? Because what I want to say at the outset is this, you can't compare, you can't just grab, like, this is what the left loves to do. They love to just grab Bible verses about aliens among the, mm-hmm. the people of Israel and the land or sojourners mm-hmm. and say, see, you're supposed to just do it like this. Just let them all in love them. It's like, well, yeah, I love them. But do you really think that Israel would have tolerated pagans worshiping their pagan gods and setting up pagan temples within the land of Israel and violating God's covenant law within their borders that they wouldn't have had them also submit as people who were sojourning to the law of the land? Um, now, obviously, Israel ing- engaged in a heck of a lot of syncretism. For sure. They engaged in a heck of a lot of abandoning God's law when those pagans came into the nation and God's warning them, don't do what they do. Don't inherit their practices. Don't, don't live like them. The point was, is that it was supposed to be the sojourners and those that came for safety and justice to the land of Israel that were supposed to come underneath the covenant law word of God within the borders of Israel, and it was the people of Israel that are now supposed to yield to their practices. And here's the thing, they wanted to. They wanted to. Because, what does Deuteronomy say? The nations will look inside Mm -hmm. of Israel, see the justice, see the righteousness that's apparent in there, and they will flow to it. Right. Because what nation has a God this just right. and has laws this magnificent. Right, yeah. That's That's why they want to come. So they come in because what were they getting in, in the land of Israel? Liberty. Right. <laughs> liberty, exactly right. right? They were Freedom getting... within God's ordained boundaries. Yeah, liberty. They were getting justice, protection, yeah. safety. But the, the sojourners and those that came in to Israel for sanctuary right. had to come under the, the law word, the covenant that God had made with Israel in terms of this is the law of the land. This yeah. is the, these are the covenant documents. Yeah. They weren't allowed to come in and just simply start violating God's stipulated standards and setting up pagan temples and doing this publicly in the open, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have been allowed. Yeah. And so, so you can't take proof text, Bible verses about sojourners and how you're supposed to treat the alien and all those things, and just start throwing them out willy-nilly. It's like, but wait, there's a context to this. Mm-hmm. Yes, and amen to making sure that you love your neighbor and that you have people coming into your land who are agreeing with the covenant documents of the land, come underneath that law. Of course, I mean, like this whole nation is a nation that was formed by immigration. Yeah. Right? Agreed and amen. Almost 100%. (laughs) All of us were on sojourners. But they had a document. They had a law and people came under. So the question is, is what's the best way to do it? Is the best way to do it just to have a simple open border and just to let people pour across with fentanyl and cartels and human trafficking? And people, listen, they have no idea of the history of this nation. They have no idea of the laws of this nation. And they have no commitment to at all abide by any of it. Like, you just let them come across like that? Or do you do it in, I think, a more responsible way that loves neighbor that says, please come. But you're allowing people to come in to do what? To get equipped and training and to come into an actual agreement and to put their hand up. Yeah. Oh, what? Oaths, yes. Hand to God. Right. Hand to God that I agree that these are the laws of this nation. Hand to God. I'm going to abide by that. 
I'm going to uphold that. That's what I believe. Before God, God strike me dead, sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's, I think, the more appropriate and consistent way to do something like this. But all that to say, we're in a difficult time because you have all these people. And, and I'll just say, like, in terms of how it personally impacts, personal impact. Um, I live um, kind of far away from the studio. Uh, you know, on a, on a good day, 20 minutes to get home. On a bad day, it'll take 40 minutes of traffic. But there's a, there's a section um, the I-10 and Baseline Road. Um, it's a section I got to pass by every single day. I-10 and Baseline. And let me just say, it is getting horrendous. Like, lock your doors. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my daughter mm -hmm. driving there uh, at certain times of day. Because the drugs, the danger... The thugs that you'll see there uh, mm -hmm. walking walking around and and doing some crazy stuff. That's one of the top spots of sex trafficking. Yeah, I know it is. That's right. That's exactly why right. this track was written That's for right. that spot right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's it's a it's becoming more and more dangerous by my house right now. Um, I I don't want my daughter going to the grocery store by my house when it's dark because it is getting more and more dangerous by the day. And the drugs, the fentanyl, the people who are standing on the corners just nodding off. I, it's dangerous. We have so much pouring across the border right now that it's endangering the lives of other people. You have to take these things into consideration, the sex trafficking, all of that. And also just in terms of caring for your neighbor, if if they're coming across the border and there's no home, there's no work, there's no, you, they're literally now endangering themselves and their families, but also now it becomes a problem in terms of stealing from the population that is already here dollars via coercion through excessive taxation to to basically fund somebody who's done this illegally and not come into a covenant with the nation that they're entering so you see in a problem there's there's all kinds of things down the line here but i everyone you probably know this what happens over the last year or more but year specifically is it's become so bad in arizona and texas specifically that it's it's uh it's completely out of control, mm -hmm. and what you're seeing from the left is the idea that we just we just need to have open borders, and who cares if they come into a covenant with the law of this nation and and everything else? Who cares? We're we're a sanctuary. <laughs> there is no law of this right. nation. It's just Demas. Exactly. We're do, we're we know we're, we're, it's funny. They're in New York and Chicago. They're like away from the border like hours and hours and hours away from the border going, just open the border up and we're, we're a sanctuary state. Perfect example of politicians thousands of miles away yeah. who have no relationship to the problem right. thinking they can govern it from mm -hmm. so far. It's Here's the point. It's easy to say to hundreds of thousands, millions of people pouring across the border, come on in when you don't personally have to face the consequences of that, whether it is the consequence in terms of how do you care for these people, the consequence of the medical care for these people, the consequence that comes with drugs and sex trafficking. It's, e trafficking. it's easy to say, just come across, no worries about you know coming into covenant with this nation and, and uh, agreeing to the laws and submitting to those sorts of things. Easy to say it when you're thousands of miles away. And the issue is, is, is this, aside from like coming into a nation where you don't, you don't even covenant or put your hand up to swear, I agree with that law, I will abide by that law. The issue is the human carnage. Like the issue is like the people who are dying in trucks. The people who are dying, you know, uh, on the borders, the the children who are being hurt, the people who are sick, and then the cost that it actually uh, is now going to uh, draw from the people who actually are citizens of this nation, have come into covenant with the laws of this nation, agree with the laws of this nation, or even the immigrants that became citizens by putting their hand up to swear an oath. Like now you're drawing from them stealing their property to care for people who did something that was unlawful. See the problem? Mm -hmm. So it's an issue that we should face down as Christians, all the while recognizing love your neighbor as you love yourself. You be good to the sojourner, all of that. But never forget, there's always a context to every verse in the Bible. It's not just to be thrown out willy-nilly and applied like peanut butter to any situation. There's a context. You don't allow people into a nation that don't agree with and abide by the laws of that nation. Very important. Yeah, I was going to say, essentially what, I mean, this was Sleepy Joe and Barack did when he was president. Uh, 
they essentially just made prisons for this these migrant people mm. you know literally they literally built cages and they made these people stay in cages and taxpayers are paying for it it's the same thing as the prison system um you know and so we're saying how is that loving your neighbor uh just by opening up the border then you're just putting them in prisons like that's not loving your neighbor um you know and there's a way to do it like and then i think yeah. jeff's done an excellent job of explaining biblically like how we should approach immigration but that's not the answer uh that's not loving the neighbor coming across and that's not loving the neighbor that's uh, a resident that's yeah. now paying for those people to be imprisoned in cages yeah citizens it's almost like every effort they take in the name of humanizing and dignifying people they end up doing the opposite mm. by dehumanizing people mm -hmm. yeah exactly. and, and turning them that's into put into animals which is what standing in opposition to God's law and God's ways always does. Mm. It makes us less human, less like what we That's were created great. to be.